Hi guys, my name's Alana. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mental Health with Alana. <laughs> if you're new here, please subscribe and plus press that thumbs up button. Also, click the bell notification so you know every time I post a video. If you're interested, I have a business called Care Boxes by Alana. I'll put it up on the screen here. If you're interested in buying a sensory box, then you can go to my Instagram and DM me. Um, I post videos Mondays and Fridays. So, I'm going to be doing another bipolar video. Um, I know I did put one out talking about um, bipolar disorder and how I try to manage it. But due to having a recent um, quite severe manic and depressive episode, probably one of the worst um, manic and depressive episodes I've ever had actually, um, I wanted to make a video on it because it ended up with me being in hospital for it. Um, it got to that extreme and I think it was most likely triggered off from stress um, and overworking myself. I was really pushing myself with trying to access different supports, um, try to figure out my NDIS which is like government disability funding. Um, feeling stressed over the fact that I don't have like enough financial income to be self-sufficient and move on my like live on my own um, you know I'm like 24 now and that's something that I've been wanting to do for the past two years um, and there's just there was just a lot of things going on like I just had appointments I'm not even joking I had appoint like medical appointments for either my physical health or my mental health every single day. I had at least one appointment or two on some days. And it was just too much. Like, it was... It was just so stressful. Um, you know. And I live with other mental health conditions and physical illnesses. And I think all of it kind of just got on top of me. And my sleep started going. And then once my sleep went, it all just kind of went downhill. But I just want to talk about the mania part in this video. Um, I'm not really at this point in time comfortable going into the depressive part because I ended up being in a acute like mental health ward um, and it was just it was just very traumatic. Um, to be honest I think I've been traumatized and yeah, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, so I don't really want to go into that, but I will go into the mania. So um, for those of you who don't know, I have schizoaffective disorder, but it's bipolar type. So schizoaffective disorder is where you live with schizophrenia and a mood disorder. So um, you can either have bipolar or depression. So I have bipolar. I've been diagnosed with bipolar since I was 19. But I had symptoms since I was 14. So I've actually been living with bipolar for a very long time. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about my manic episode. And what to, it's a little bit hard because often in mania you don't really remember what you were doing. Um, and it's a bit blurry. So I'm going to try to relay as much information as I can remember. Um, but... I may not be able to remember everything I was doing because it went it went for about a month, which um, is normal for my manic episodes. They generally last about three to four weeks, um, and if intervention isn't given, it can go on longer than that. Um, and obviously, the longer you leave it, the worse it can get. So for this manic episode in particular, I um, first of all I was like driving. I, I don't know what I was doing. So I was driving. All I remember is that I was driving around everywhere. I was speeding. Um, I was not being careful at all where I was driving. I had music up like full blast. Um, not paying attention, you know. But I don't know where, <laughs> where I was driving to or why I was driving everywhere. It, was, it wasn't to appointments. It was just me driving. I don't know what it is. I think... The, the problem with me when I get manic is I feel trapped in my house. So I need to go out. I need to go out and socialize. I need to go out and have fun. I need to go out and just do anything. You know what I mean? Um, I get very, at the beginning stages, I get very, 
wanting to socialize, I'm wanting to, I'm very energetic, um, I'm extremely optimistic, you know, um, and just super, like, I've got everything together, it's all going to be great, um, I mean, you know, even the way I dress kind of changes, I don't have as many issues with my eating disorder at that time, um, which my cat is crying in the background, um, which for me, I have anorexia, so I'm never happy with my body, I'm never happy with what I look like, um, especially because I gained a lot of weight from being on high doses of medications and quetiapine, um, which thankfully I'm getting off, I'm so excited about that, um, my meds are not sorted whatsoever, but I will say that the quetiapine is going, um, and it's almost, almost gone, it's gone down more than half the dose, um, and already I'm noticing a lot less physical symptoms, but this video is not about medication because I can't even make one because these, let's put it in this way, stupid doctors don't know what they're doing, um, and haven't contacted me. And I've just messed my whole entire medication up. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, to be honest, the other reason I don't want to post a video about my bad depressive episode and me going to acute is because I don't know how to... I, I just don't know what... I don't know how to say the right things because I'm I'm still in the stage of being really really pissed off at a lot of decisions that were made that shouldn't have been made and people just being when I mean people I mean like doctors and professionals like just not listening to you whatsoever I mean you don't have any rights anyway because you're legally under a hold but you know, they just, they've messed everything up, um, and I'm not happy about it, so that's the other reason I don't want to make the video, because I'm just too mad about it, um, but anyway, back to the medium, so yeah, I was driving all around, I was very reckless, I spent, like, and this has happened before with my mania, where I spent a lot of money, but I'm not, but this time it was bad, it was really, really bad, and, I know there's nothing I can do about it now, so I'm trying to just not think about it, but it's honestly very upsetting when you've saved and tried really hard to save a certain amount of money and then you just completely blow it and it was like a lot of money. Um, thankfully, like I don't have, obviously, <laughs> I would never get one, a credit card. I don't have some, anything like that, so I'm not like in debt or nothing like that, but all my savings was gone. Um, so that was the other thing. I wasn't sleeping um, at all. And I was starting to get really, really irritated. And the, I mean, I, I couldn't sleep and my whole body was just like buzzing with this annoying energy that I literally couldn't get out. And it was making me so angry and, and frustrated. So then it started moving from the phase of being like, oh my gosh, this is fun, to which this always happens. Um, after about a week, then it just moves into this horrible, like, irritated, like, angry mood. And I can't get the energy out. And my mum had taken my keys by that point, And I was so mad because I was like, I need to go out of the house. I need to go out. Um, I was smoking heaps, um, which I stopped, actually. Round of applause for me. Um, given that up, but I was, I, I was smoking very heavily, um, because it was the only way to try to regulate my body, like, to calm down, and so I would, I would just be smoking, like, so much, um, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't sit still, um, I, I wasn't really socializing with anyone, but if I had been, it, I probably would have ended up doing stupid things or talking super fast and interrupting everyone and kind of just those like basically when I'm manic like those social cues just go you know like the social cues of 
Oh, I'm interrupting someone. I should probably stop. Or, oh, I've been talking for way too long. I should probably stop. Or, oh, this other person needs to get a word in. Or, this person might not want me to be talking about this issue right now. You know, those type of things go. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. So, yeah. And then, I mean, sleep going is, like, not not good for, you know, bi um, bipolar. And then because of all this, um, I, and then it turned into me getting quite irritated and bad hallucinations, um, like visual and auditory, which I get auditory ones weekly, but these were getting like more like ramped up, you know, um, they weren't just like my general stuff that I do with now on medication. It was like a lot more, um, worse and it was bothering me, um, you know, and I just, I just could not sit still. It's a really horrible, horrible feeling. You feel trapped continuously. Like, it's almost like you just, I mean, uh, t look, I was, I was planning, this is how, like, manic I was, I was planning on, my mom had taken my keys, otherwise I would have done this. I was planning on driving to, like, somewhere, like, like, four hours from where I live or something, and going and just staying in some random, like, hotel place and, like, going out and drinking heat, and, like, just finding people to drink with or whatever. Um, so that was basically what I was, like, thinking in my head. Um, I, yeah, it was just, I just remember feeling really, really irritated because of all this built up, like, internal energy, and, like, just, like, nothing I could do would, like, make it come out, and the other thing is, because I was so manic, I was staying up all night over and over and over again and so the days and the nights are so long because you're up all night and there's only so much you can do to entertain yourself you know um all day and all night and you know I still live at home with my parents so I just had my room I couldn't go out and cook if I wanted to you know cook I mean I normally am actually quite a random impulsive person so like if I want to go cook like cupcakes at like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night that's normal for me but the fact was is that I wanted to do these things when I was manic but I couldn't because everyone else in the house was sleeping um you know <laughs> I I listen to a lot of Machine Gun Kelly I don't know what it is I mean look I listen to Machine Gun Kelly anyway but when I'm manic like I that's all I listen to is Machine Gun Kelly um, but yeah, so I basically got to the point where I was so irritated this one night, we had no diazepam left to try to calm me down, and I was hallucinating, I was just, like, completely out of it. I was laying, like, across my mum's bed, so I wasn't even laying on the bed properly. I was, like, moving my legs around, I was, like, not able to sit still, I was, like, hallucinating, like, black um, I don't know what you, what do you, what you call it, like, black goo, it look, I was hallucinating it dripping from the ceiling onto her bed, um, I was, like, hearing voices, I was so irritated, and my mom tried to ring the, um, acute care team because we just needed some diazepam, so, at the hospital, so we just wanted to see if we could somehow get access to it just until we could get in with my psychiatrist who would be able to help me by prescribing me some higher meds just for that time being until the mania subsided subsided um anyway they said look we can't do that like you, your psychiatrist was maybe a gp is really the only person who can prescribe benzos because it's such a highly classified drug um and my mom was like well i don't know what i'm supposed to do with her like she's not going to be going to bed you know, and I just kept saying, I want to go for a drive, I want to go for a drive, um, I want to go have a smoke, like, whatever, so I go have a smoke, and then my mom says, okay, I'll take you for a drive, so we went for a drive, but it wasn't me driving, and it wasn't a long drive, so I wasn't happy with it, and I was really irritated still at the fact that it was, just like, a short drive, um, so, you know, I mean, I ended up going into a private hospital, um, and my psychiatrist did a great job and um, fixed my medication up and my episode did end. 
the problem, which I'm not going to go into the actual details of it, but the problem was is what goes up comes down, which is what my psychiatrist was very worried about at the time. Um, and so, unfortunately, and I, look, normally I actually generally only struggle with mania. I really don't struggle with depression, depression anymore. When it comes to my bipolar, it's a lot more mania. Um, as a teenager, it was heavily depression. But as I've gotten older, like especially in the last few years, mania has been the main issue. But for whatever the reason is, I went into the one of the worst depressed episodes I've ever, ever had. Um, and that's what landed me out of the private hospital into a really high risk um, hospital setting, which, like I said, I don't know, I'm not going to make a video on, um, I hope you guys can respect that boundary, but, yeah, it's not something that I can deal with right now, like, I just can't deal with it, I haven't processed it, um, and it was just extremely traumatizing, and a lot of things went wrong that shouldn't have, and the people who were in charge of my care were very negligent, um, and it just didn't, it didn't fix or help anything at all. Um, in fact, it actually has made my mental health a lot worse. Um, I've been out for about a week and my <laughs> emotional state is horrific. Um, not depressed, but just all over the shop. Yeah, so that was a video about my previous last manic episode. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen again. I had a manic episode in February. It was not this bad and I didn't have depression after it. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this one was a very odd situation because I really don't normally have depressive episodes like that um, anymore. So yeah, I'm not sure why that occurred. I really don't. I think maybe because the mania was quite severe. Um, that it just inevitably was going to go downhill. But yeah, hopefully um, you guys can learn something from this. I mean, these are signs of mania and things that people do when they're manic. Um, you know, look, if I wasn't living at home, it would have been a lot worse because I had, uh, at least at home, I had people watching me. Um, whereas if I was living on my own, who knows what situations I could have got myself into. And I think that's the scariest thing about mania is you just have no clue what you're going to do. And you can wreck your entire life in a manic episode. Um, and it's no fun. And thank you guys for watching.